Ever felt like you're wrestling with spreadsheets, trying to make sense of overwhelming data, only to end up with static charts that barely scratch the surface of what's truly happening? You're not alone. The leap from Excel to Power BI is about turning that frustration into empowerment. For those at the starting line of data analysis in Power BI, this journey transforms daunting data into dynamic, insightful visualizations. Power BI excels where Excel reaches its limit. With advanced data integration, it connects to almost any data source you can think of. Its visualization capabilities are not only more sophisticated, but also interactive, allowing for insights that speak volumes more than static charts. Real-time analytics, Power BI has it covered, offering live updates directly in your dashboards. And when it comes to collaboration, Power BI makes sharing insights a breeze across your organization. Simply put, Power BI is designed to make your data work harder for you. But first things first, let's get Power BI Desktop, which is the free design tool and the perfect starting point. Head to the Microsoft Power BI website and down under Microsoft Power BI Desktop, click on the download button. Or if you prefer, you can go to advanced download options, run the installer and follow the simple steps. And in no time, you'll be greeted with the Power BI interface, ready to start your data journey. We're going to create a new report. So I'll click on the new report button. And next I want to bring in my data, which is in an Excel file. So I can simply click on import data from Excel. But don't forget there are tons of different sources that you can get data from. Navigate to your file. I should point out that if you're using Excel, the Excel file needs to be closed before you can load it into Power BI. So let's go ahead and open it. Here I have a list of the items in my file. I've got a table and one sheet. Table one is on sheet one. So I'm going to go with the table and you get a preview here on the right. And from here, I can simply load it directly to my Power BI data model. Alternatively, I can click on transform data and this opens the Power Query editor window. Here you can clean your data, remove duplicates, filter columns, unpivot to name a few. This step is crucial for ensuring your analysis is based on accurate and relevant data. Cleaning your data in Power Query before starting your analysis is the key to saving time and avoiding headaches down the line, trust me. But for our project today, I've cleaned the data set just to keep things streamlined. So I'm going to go to the Home tab and close and apply to load the data to the Power BI data model. If you're curious about mastering data cleaning in Power Query, I have a dedicated course on Power Query to get you started. And it doesn't end there. I also offer a comprehensive course on Power BI, which you can get in a bundle with Power Query and Power Pivot to fully round out your data analysis skills. And you can find the links in the video description. The data I'll be using is 12 months worth of fictitious customer feedback data by category, feedback source, and sales associate ID. Now, before we build our report, I'm just going to select the customer ID column and on the column tools, I'm going to change the default summarization to don't summarize and likewise for the sales associate ID. This will just prevent the visuals from thinking they should sum those fields. Okay, let's create the visuals and take advantage of Power BI's unique features to create a dynamic and interactive dashboard. I'm going to start with a column chart and you can insert it from the drop down here or via the view tab, you can turn on the different panes and use the task panes on the right. For example, here I want the clustered column chart Pops it on the left. I'm just going to bring it over to the right, closer to my task panes. I'm going to collapse the filters. I don't need them right now. In the data pane, I've got my table and all the columns which represent the fields that I can work with. So the first thing I want is the date. And notice it's inserted it and it's grouped it into a date hierarchy, which is super helpful. I don't want to be able to go down to the day level of detail. So I'm going to remove day from my hierarchy. And next, I want to see the rating. Now it's defaulted to sum the rating. Here, I'm going to average it instead. Now currently the chart's displaying the data aggregated to the year level. I'm gonna click on the pitchfork icon to drill down. First we go to quarter and then month level. Let's make it a bit wider so we can see the months horizontally. All right, let's do some formatting. I'll click on the formatting pane. And firstly, the X axis, I don't need the title. It's pretty obvious, they're dates. For the Y axis, I'll do the same, turn the title off. I'm also going to turn the values off because instead of having the axis, I'm going to add data labels. And let's just go in here and change the position to inside the end. Lastly, let's double click on the chart title because we don't need by year 
quarter and month, that's obvious. And we'll just say average rating. Let me left click and drag just to move the chart down off the very top and give it some white space. All right, next, let's insert a pie chart. And again, I'll just bring it over closer to the task panes. Here, I want to look at my data by category and I want to know how many customers gave feedback by category. So I'm just going to left click and drag it into the values area and it's counted the customers, which is perfectly fine. All right, let's do some formatting. We'll start with the title and I can also change it in here. So we'll call it feedback count by category. Next, I don't want the legend, so let's turn that off. And then under detailed labels, we need to add the legend information back in. So I'm going to choose category and percent of total. All right, let's move that over here and I'll just roughly resize it. Next, I want a bar chart. So I want this clustered bar chart. And this is going to show the feedback source and I want the response time, but instead of sum, let's change that to average. And let's do some formatting. We'll start with the title. So we'll just call this average response time. And we don't need to say by feedback source. That's obvious. Next, let's remove the titles from the axes because they're self-explanatory. And again, we'll turn off the values for the X axis and instead we'll add data labels and we'll position them inside the end. All right, let's make this a bit smaller so we've got space for one more. Next, I want to insert a matrix table and this is a bit like a pivot table. So here I want to look at my data by sales associate down the rows and categories in the columns. And then let's look at the rating. And again, instead of sum, let's change that to average. Now tables don't come with a title by default, so let's add one and we'll call this average rating. Now let's add some conditional formatting under cell elements. I want to put background color on. The default formatting is pretty good. It's highlighting the larger values in a darker color and the smaller ones in a lighter shade of blue. And that just helps us easily identify the scale within each sales associate. All right, let's make this a bit narrower and give our other charts more space. One of the cool things about Power BI is the ability to interact with your visuals. For example, here I've clicked on the product segment in the pie chart, and now my column and bar charts show the product values highlighted with a darker bar. And the matrix table is now filtered to display just the product column. Clicking on another segment changes the focus. I can do this with the bar chart as well. So now everything in my report is highlighting social media. Likewise, I can do it with the column chart. Now my visuals are all filtered to highlight or only display data for March. And just left click again to remove the cross filtering and highlighting. Now another way we can filter is with slicers. So let's go ahead. We've got actually got a new slicer. So let's use that one. And I want to be able to filter based on the feedback source. The slicer populates with the unique values from that field. And from here, you can customize the appearance and behavior of your slicer. So I'm going to go in and change the layout to only have one column. And that's just going to make my slicer buttons display in a vertical layout. Now, when I click on the slicer, all visuals are filtered. This means with just a few clicks, you can reshape your entire dashboard to focus on product feedback from email. And every chart automatically reflects this source. It's a streamlined and integrated way to explore your data, making Power BI uniquely powerful for uncovering insights in complex data sets. Now I can also control which visuals the slicer filters via the format tab and then edit interactions. For example, I already have the average response time broken out by feedback source. So I don't also want to filter this bar chart. I can turn off the filtering by clicking on the none icon and then I'll turn off edit interactions. So now when I filter with the slicer, notice that the bar chart doesn't get filtered. Now, before we look at the next cool feature, let's double click the page and rename this summary. Power BI's drill through feature allows you to create focus pages in your report that provide detailed information about a specific data point selected from another page. Now I've added a page to my report to illustrate how it works. For example, this page is now filtered for sales associate five, and I can focus in on their performance. 
It's a powerful way to offer detailed insights without overcrowding your main dashboard. To set up a page for drill through, go to the page information under formatting and then under page type, just select drill through. Next, you need to add the field that you want to be able to drill through from. So I want the sales associate. Notice in the top left, it's now added a button and that allows me to control and left click to go back to my original page. Now, when I right click on any of the sales associates in the menu, I get drill through and I can choose the page. You can have more than one. Let's go to sales associate. And now this page is filtered for sales associate 12, which is the one I right clicked on. Pretty cool. Okay, let's control S to save the report and look at publishing. Sharing your interactive dashboards in Power BI allows stakeholders to explore data insights in a dynamic and intuitive way. And unlike Excel, sharing in Power BI is easy and secure. You can even lock down different views of the data depending on the person who views the report, which saves you having to create multiple versions of the same report for each recipient. And I cover this technique in my Power BI course. To share a report that you build in Power BI Desktop, go to the File tab, Publish, Publish to Power BI. You'll need to sign in with your Power BI account if you're not already, and then choose the workspace you want to publish to and click Select. Now, depending on how big your report is, this could take a few minutes. Once published, go to the Power BI service in app.powerbi.com and navigate to your report. So mine is in my demos workspace and I've got a report and a semantic model, which is the data set. So clicking on report, you can see I've got my sales associate page and my summary page. Now, one way you can share reports for free is via the file tab, embed report, and then publish to web, which is going to be publicly available. Alternatively, you can embed them in a website or portal, although that requires a pro or premium license. Alternatively, you can securely share your reports with other Power BI users within your organization by the share button. This also requires pro or premium license. In the Power BI service, cross filtering and highlighting works in the same way as Power BI desktop, enabling your users to personalize their view of the report without affecting what other users see. If today's overview sparked your interest, there's more to discover. Check out this detailed video for a deeper dive into unlocking the full power of your data with Power BI. See you in the next video.